In this video, I'm going to clearly explain what the Bonferroni correction is and why you should perform it. As always, please drop a like if you find this content useful, or send me a comment below if you have any questions. And without further ado, let's get started. Simply put, the Bonferroni correction is a method used to control the family-wise error rate. But what does this family-wise error rate mean? The family-wise error rate is the probability of incorrectly rejecting the true null hypothesis. In other words, it's the chance of finding a false positive result. You also read that this is referred to as type 1 error, and I'll go into a bit more detail about this later. Now we researchers and scientists usually start an experiment by stating our alpha level or significance level. Most of the time this is 0.05, and as we do we usually perform an experiment that has a hypothesis. Based on this we can calculate the family wise error rate by using this equation, where alpha is the alpha level and m is the number of tests or hypotheses being performed. For a single experiment, the alpha as mentioned is usually 0.05, and m in this case would be 1, because there is just one test. This would mean that the family-wise error rate is 0.05, or 5%. So we are accepting that there is a 5% chance of obtaining a false positive result, and we are generally fine with this. Now let me give you a different example. Say we have an experiment where we compared the means of four groups using a one-way ANOVA test using an alpha level of 0.05. The p-value for this test was 0.01, therefore there is a statistically significant difference between the means of my four groups. The next step is to perform what are known as post hoc tests to see which group is different from the rest, and so we usually perform a family of tests comparing each possible comparison. Doing so would mean we'd have to compare the means of group 1 to group 2, group 1 to group 3, group 1 to group 4, and so on and so forth. So in total, we need to perform six individual tests. But before we do that, let's just quickly calculate the family-wise error rate for this if we didn't control for any multiple comparisons. As before, our alpha level is 0.05, but this time m is 6 because we are performing six tests simultaneously. Doing so will give a family-wise error rate of 0.2 65 or 26.5 percent. So just by doing six tests there is a 26.5 percent chance of discovering one or more false positive results and that's just by performing a family of six tests. The more tests that are performed the larger the family wise error rate is. When using an alpha level of 0.05 performing 10 tests has a family wise error rate of 40 percent 30 tests give an error rate of 79% and 60 tests gives an error rate of 95%. So now you can see the issue of performing multiple comparisons. So one way to control for this is to use a multiple comparisons correction method. And the Bonferroni correction is just one such example. The correction is actually really easy to understand, which is the reason why it is commonly used. You take your original alpha level and you divide it by k and k is the number of tests being performed. So if we use our previous example of performing six tests, this would mean the Bonferroni corrected alpha level is 0.05 divided by six, which is 0.008 when rounded. Let's just quickly calculate the family-wise error rates using this corrected alpha with six tests. And doing so, we can see that the outcome is at approximately 0.047, or 4.7%. So by correcting the alpha level through the Bonferroni method, we have reduced the family-wise error rate back down to approximately 5%, which is great. In fact, the Bonferroni method is so strong that it keeps the family-wise error rate at around 5%, regardless of the number of simultaneous tests performed. And I'll go into a bit more detail later as to why this can be an issue. Let me now return back to my previous example of performing post hoc tests on the four groups. Say we perform separate t tests for each comparisons and found the following p values. Now, instead of using 0.05 as our level of significance, we now use the Bonferroni corrected alpha of 0.008. 
so we can only deem the result to be statistically significant if the p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.008. And by looking at the p-values, we can see that there is only one significant result between groups 1 and 4 after correcting for multiple comparisons through the Bonferroni procedure. So that's an overview of the Bonferroni correction and why it is used. Before I finish, I just wanted to elaborate some more on the downsides of the Bonferroni correction method. When you perform hypothesis testing, there are generally two types of error or mistakes that you can make. The first is known as type 1 error, which is what I touched on earlier. This occurs when you reject the true null hypothesis. In other words, this is a false positive result. On the other hand, there is also type 2 error. This occurs when you fail to reject a false null hypothesis. In other words, this is a false negative result. Generally, there is a fine balance between the two types of error, and as one type of error increases, the other tends to decrease, and vice versa. And as you know, the Bonferroni correction can rapidly reduce the type 1 error by reducing the alpha level as the number of tests increases. However, this comes at a cost, since it quickly increases the type 2 error, or chances of finding a false negative result. This means the Bonferroni correction can seriously reduce the statistical power of your test, making it harder to find the true effect. So it's always worth keeping in mind when considering the Bonferroni correction procedure. Alternatively, there are many other tests that you can use to control for type 1 error during multiple comparison testing, and many of these tests are considered less conservative or strict compared with the Bonferroni correction. I'll discuss these methods in more detail in future tutorials. And that brings me swiftly on to the end of this tutorial. Now you should have a better idea of what the Bonferroni correction is, why it is used, and how to perform it yourself. If you found this video useful, please leave a like, it really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.